Shalom everybody, I'm Rolene Marks. This is where we meet every Monday to Thursday. It's a date that I have every day with you guys right here on the Israel Brief, brought to you by these guys, Lay of the Land, where we take a look at the top stories making headlines in what is a very, very hot and humid Israel. We're heading into peak summer and uh, we think of all those who are fighting in defense of our country. We think of all those who are under extreme stress uh, on, on both sides in this very, very hot weather. It is day 244 of Israel's war against Hamas following the atrocities of the Hamas invasion on the 7th of October. We also remember that there are 124 hostages being held, their bodies held inside the Gaza Strip, inside the Hamas terror tunnels. We want them released now. Let's take a look at those top stories before we head into the weekend. And of course, take the viewer question of the day, which comes from Honey Creel. And we begin with news that the IDF this morning announced that they had struck a UNRWA school. Now, fighter jets, they say, struck a, an UNRWA school. They say that Hamas and other terror operatives were using as a terror base to launch attacks against Israeli civilians. Some of the terrorists, and we believe that there were between 27 and 30 terrorists killed, were responsible for the 7th of October atrocities. Now, the IDF, as uh, they have, released footage, released uh, clear graphics of the attack. And, of course, the global media again sprung into action and said that Israel had attacked an UNRWA school. All throughout this war, UNRWA has been... Uh, not just a venue for stockpiling weapons, but this is where Hamas have exploited the uh, status of these schools and hospitals by using them as human shields, which of course changes their protected status into legitimate military targets. And I think now as responsible media consumers, we should demand better of our media to present us the full facts and the full pictures when all the evidence is in. So just to reiterate that the IDF and fighter jets struck a UNRWA school that was being used as a terror base by Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad terrorists. Also uncovered yesterday was a nest of mortars ready to be fired towards uh, Israeli civilian uh, infrastructure that uh, were found under boxes, under containers with UNICEF branding. UNICEF is also an agent of the United Nations and the, the UNICEF, which is the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, their mandate is to protect children, all children, not to be exploited as cover for missiles and rockets and mortars launched against civilians. Yesterday, Hezbollah claimed responsibility for an explosive drone attack on a village in the north of Israel, which saw 10 people uh, injured, including children, and one reserve soldier who died later of his wounds. It was uh, the, the soldier's name was Rafael Kauda. He was 39 years old from Tzul Hadassah. May his memory be blessed. But... Uh, what we now know happened was that two drones laden with explosives struck within minutes of each other, causing a lot of trauma, causing these injuries. This taking place on a soccer field in the north in a Druze village. From what we can ascertain that these drones were targeting rescue workers and they were also in an area where there are Druze villagers who have stayed behind probably for economical reasons. The north has been on fire. Hezbollah have been launching attacks every single day since the 8th of October and the world has been silent. Well, we here at the Israel Brief will not be silent and we will continue to shine a spotlight on the very, very dire situation 
in the north. You know, we hear a lot about how uh, Gazans are running out of food. Well, here in Israel, we have very few farm workers that uh, are on our farms to pick fruit, to pick vegetables. If it wasn't for the thousands of people flying in from all over the world to, to volunteer their time, and, and, and for some foreign workers who are coming from places like Malawi and India, we wouldn't have food. And you can certainly see on supermarket shelves that a lot of products and a lot of produce that we used to get so much of, we're not getting so much anymore. And while we are not starving, uh, you can definitely see deficits in our supermarkets. So uh, what people tend to forget, while the focus is on civilians in Gaza, that Israeli civilians are having a hard time too, emotionally, uh, physically, and uh, with a lot of other issues that are creeping into our everyday lives. Living through a war is not easy at all. It is extremely, extremely difficult and taxing on all of us in so many different ways. 18 world leaders who have citizens being held captive by Hamas issued a statement earlier today calling on Hamas to accept the latest ceasefire deal. This is the deal that President Biden announced on uh, Friday night Israel time. Yesterday, speaking to the ABC Today show, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said that Israel had accepted it. President Biden, speaking to Time magazine, said that the Prime Minister will, be, will do anything to get those hostages back. But today, yet again, we heard another resounding no from Hamas. So for everybody out there calling for ceasefires, remember who is the party that is continuously turning down opportunities for ceasefires. It's not Israel, but it is Hamas. Hamas have said no ceasefire until full withdrawal. In the statement, the leaders from countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, France, Austria, Argentina, Colombia, Bulgaria, Thailand, uh, Canada, Serbia, and so many others, Romania, uh, that uh, whose who citizens are still held captive, said that time is of the essence. Time is uh, running out, and there is no time like the present for Hamas to accept the ceasefire. Now, uh, remember, they're putting the burden not on Israel, but on Hamas to accept the ceasefire deal. They say that they want this war to end, and this at least is a starting point. There are important imploring Hamas, let the hostages go. Return the hostages to their, their families, return those that are, are no longer living uh, for a dignified burial and those that are alive to start the recovery process and be with their loved ones again. Everybody wants this war to end and this is the time for it to be discussed. And finally, yesterday I touched on the fact that today is the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landings. And I just want to take a moment to salute the greatest generation. I've been following the events at uh, uh, Versailles uh, in Normandy, in France. I've seen uh, their majesties, King Charles, Queen Camilla, the Prince of Wales, Prince William, and various world leaders like uh, the Canadian Prime Minister, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, the President of uh, France, the President of the United States, gathering there with the real, real stars of, uh, of the day, the real heroes and those are the remaining veterans. Veterans have come from all over the world, uh, many of them centena centenarians. The oldest veteran is 107 years old and uh, there they are, medals shined up proudly and uh, they were the most extraordinary generation. Some of our grandparents, parents, great-grandparents who landed on those beaches. Gold, Sword, Juno, Omaha and Utah for the largest amphibious operation in the history of warfare for Operation Overlord, which would see the Allied forces coming in via land, sea and air and 
going from town to town, city to city on the continent at great pain and at massive loss to, to liberate Europe from the Nazi war machine. And for us as Jews, many of them would go into the death camps, into the concentration camps and liberate us from a certain death from the Nazis who wished to exterminate us. And in the immortal words of somebody who has a, a, a lot more eloquence with words, they gave their todays so we would have our tomorrows. Today is a day to salute them. But today is also a day to acknowledge that this is probably the last time we will have these veterans around. And so it is incumbent on all of us to, to learn our history, to learn what happened in the Second World War, uh, not uh, only the Holocaust, but all the events around it uh, as well, to learn about sacrifice, to learn about the tremendous price paid that uh, we can live today in freedom and democracy that we take for granted. And uh, I salute the greatest generation, the generation that fought and lived through the Second World War. And now it is time for the audience question, and it comes from Honey Creel, who says, how does the IDF know if a hostage is dead without a body? That is an excellent question, uh, Honey. What we do know is the IDF, through gathering uh, the footage, through gathering all kinds of intelligence, uh, whether it is from those who have been held hostage, those uh, who are on the, the ground. And remember, we've got guys uh, gathering intelligence all the time. Uh, and, and from other knowledge that, that we glean, we, we know that specific hostages have been killed in uh, captivity. And this week, we, we found out about the murders of five of our hostages, Dolev Yehud, uh, who we thought was kidnapped on the 7th of October, but uh, who was, whose body was in such a condition that it took eight months to identify him and we had to use anthropological experts to help with that. I don't even want to imagine what those terrorist barbarians did to him. And of course, Amiram Cooper, uh, uh, Yoram um, Metzger, uh, Chaim Perry, and Nadav Popowell from Kibbutzim, Nirim, and Nir Oz who were murdered by Hamas in captivity. May all their memories be blessed. So that's it for today and for the weekend. Guys, don't forget to join me on Monday. There won't be an Israel brief on Wednesday because it is the Jewish festival of Shavuot. But in the meantime, please check out our website at www.layoftheland.online. Our Facebook page is at Lottel's site. Our YouTube channel is at The Israel Brief. We're on X at Lay of the Land 5. Shabbat Shalom, guys. Have a wonderful, a peaceful weekend. Remember, you are adored here. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Thank you for taking care of me. And I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.